Gentlemen of the jury, I want to thank you very much for listening to this case. I've noticed that you have been very attentive and that you followed the arguments of counsel, and I want to thank you for both of them and in my own behalf for giving your attention to this case. I would also like to thank counsel for both parties. They have been very cooperative with the court, and we have been able to run the case with very little argument or the like, and that makes my job ever so much easier. Now, it is my duty at this time to charge you as to what the law is that is applicable to this case. You must accept the law as I give it to you, even though you may disagree with it or think it should be otherwise. It is the law that governs this case. On the other hand, you are the sole and exclusive judges of the facts. You determine what the true facts are. You do that by going over the testimony and deciding what witnesses you believe or what portion of the testimony you will accept and the weight you will give to that proof. I should warn you that unanswered questions is not evidence and no inference can be drawn from such. Also, any testimony that I have stricken out of the case, you must disregard, even though you heard it. I don't recall any such in this case, however, and what the lawyers say, of course, is not evidence, that is argument. During the course of the trial, I have had to rule on motions with regard to the admissibility of evidence, mostly, and the like, and you should not consider those rulings as being anything but rulings on law, nor should you interpret any of these rulings on my part as being any indication of any feeling I might have as to how you might decide the facts. Feelings that I have in that regard would be totally irrelevant since you are the sole and exclusive judges of the facts. During the course of this charge, I will refer to some of the facts and I will leave the others out simply because I don't want to get into your province. However, I have to refer to some of the facts so that you can judge whether the law applies as I give it to you and to this particular case. You can consider only the competent evidence that has been introduced here by the witnesses and by the exhibits and by the depositions that have been read. Even though the, this testimony and this proof is admissible does not mean that you have to accept the proof even though it is admissible. You decide what proof you will accept and what and which you will reject and what weight you will give and attach to the proof. You do this like you do it in everyday life. You judge the reliability or unreliability of people every day, and you do the same here based on your own experience. You may consider the interest or lack of interest of a witness in the outcome of this case. You consider the bias of a witness. You consider the relationship or friendship between a witness and a party, and you should consider the manner in which the various witnesses gave their testimony. Were they frank and open? Were they evasive? Consider their opportunity to observe the facts and consider whether they exaggerate or tend to cut down on the proof. Consider the probability or improbability of any particular witness's version as to how the accident occurred. Consider the physical facts as shown by the photographs that have been introduced in evidence. You can consider the nature and extent of the in injuries, you should try to reconcile the various versions of this accident that have been given by the two parties here, and if you can't reconcile it, you will just have to decide which version is correct. Now, both the plaintiff and the defendant in this case are what is known as interested witnesses because they have an interest in the outcome of this lawsuit, a financial interest. <laughs> that was that. That uh, was fast. It was... Uh, that was fast. Let's see. That was, you know, uh, that's 700 words in uh, three and a half minutes. That's 200.